a few days ago, the AT&T just basically sold off um, Warner Media to Discovery, and it was kind of a merger, but not really. Um, they, the CEO of Discovery is basically now running everything, so it was kind of a selling thing. And um, from the interviews I've seen him in and what he said in um, the trades and all that, he seems to be pretty much saying the right things. But, um, you know, you know, he's saying stuff like um, he'll he'll have um, creatives in control. And he, he said that he'll spend 20 billion dollars yearly. And that's a really big, big change from the previous management. Right. And stuff like that is very promising. And again, he says um, he'll have good relationships with talent. And uh, one part of me says that, okay, this is something that everyone wants to hear and it's good. Um, and I will definitely accept that because that's not something that we even got before uh, from the previous management. But again, um, he knows what to say, right? And he's probably just saying that just because everyone wants to hear that um what do you think is going to happen steven after he takes charge um i think a lot of the um kind of strife that came under at&t was because at&t isn't traditionally a media company and so they were running things a little bit differently like structurally like that was the big thing with kylar um was coming in and getting rid of a lot of the kind of classic Hollywood bureaucracy and kind of entrenched like executive structures. And under Discovery, one of the, the you know, Hollywood seems to be a bigger fan of it, which isn't always a, a good thing. I think Kylar and AT&T maybe were right to, to kind of thin out some of the herd there, but that process wasn't allowed to kind of be seen and to completion. So I don't know what, that means exactly for like in terms of corporate structure that is going to change under discovery. But the one change is that they're going to have a much better grasp on producing content. Um, whether or not that means like good content or the kind of content that people want to see, I can't <laughs> like, well, to wait and see like what they do. Um, but they're going to be a lot more, you know, just like their, their dedication to, to doing $20 billion in content a year, I think is out the gate kind of a, a big deal given that's going to be split between, you know, there's going to be a lot more like reality TV and home renovation kind of stuff coming from discovery. It's not going to be like 20 billion going to DC specifically or, um, or anything like that. But um, I think in a lot of ways it could be seen as a step in the right direction. I know the big question with anything like this is always from Snyder fans. Like, Oh, is this good for the Snyder cut or for justice league two and three? And it's one of those things where, like yes, there there are a hundred stars that need to be aligned, and one of them, this is or at least part of one, one of them, them so or at least part of one of them. Bad. So I guess it's certainly not a bad thing for if that is like the thing that you care about the most. But it's not a thing that is like tipping the scale. It's just it's just one one more thing down, and so now there's you know one down, ninety nine to go. And so yes, that's encouraging, that's positive, but it's not a like. It's coming. This is, you know, yeah. this is the sign that it's going to be here. So they've still, you know, there's still executives that need to change, you know, like um, Emmerich and Sarnoff and and by all signs, um, you know, Emmerich is already friendly with with Discovery if he wasn't like directly involved in kind of orchestrating this. It sounds like Kylar was kind of they pulled a fast one on him with this whole situation. Um, and uh so I don't know. I'm kind of wait and see on on what everything looks like when it when it all kind of you know where the if the see where the pieces fall. Um, I'd say it's more good than bad, but it's it's kind of just new um, new boss, same as the old boss in a lot of ways. Fun. <laughs> yeah, like it's for me like our last topic as well. We won't see the implications of this for another year and a half or two years. It's kind of like how. Right now, we're seeing Walter Hamada's DC Universe. Even though he got the job, I think it was in January of 2018, he got the job, just the start of January. So we don't get to see his universe until really now what he's trying to do. It would be the same for David Sasloff, who was over Discovery and now was kind of over Warner Media and kind of over all these branches now. But yeah, as Stephen said, like this is a good thing to happen. 
it could be worse. It, this might not never have happened, and the same people would have been in charge. So yeah, for the Snyder Cut, yeah, this is kind of a, a glimmer of hope for us. But I don't think it's the the ultimate thing because there's so much going into making more HBO Max, more media, better success. Because I did a lot of reading up on David Sazlov when he got announced as kind of this merger happening, and his kind of motto, his kind of formula was reality shows and you know, um, <clears throat> like beer grills, stuff like that going to the water sharks like that kind of uh, tv shows and they, that they're like daytime tv like they're yeah. very very popular people and uh that's what like, i remember as, as, as i was watching an interview he was being asked like how can you compete with netflix how can you compete with amazon with disney plus he's like yeah we're not concentrating on movies we're not concentrating on series we're concentrating on what they're not doing and he has a big implication in sport in europe he's over your he has your sport there's also golf tv like they're those are big um, organizations who have big followings of, of people who watch those kind of sports, cooking as well as one of them. So yeah, you'll see a lot more of that, as Stephen said. But you'll definitely, it's like you're you're getting HBO Max, which is isn't where it's supposed to be in terms of maybe a Netflix or Disney Plus. But then you have Discovery coming over, where they are in their own league, competing with themselves, and now they're merging with Warner Media, and it makes the entire thing look good, even though it was kind of just Discovery that's good. So I think David Zaslav will end up helping foreign media you know a bit you know and uh, make sure they're getting on the right track in terms of a business point of view but the right products need to be greened as well and uh, the right movies and the right people involved that's 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 important i don't think david sadloff's going to come in and say yeah that we need to get christopher nolan on this project here you know he'll be doing his yeah. his side of it as well but we'll have to see how it goes but i think it's a, he's an interesting character like i like reading up in these times like in school i was never good at, at maths i was never good at, at you know, business or history and stuff like that but when you add movies to it i automatically get interested and then i start kind of putting the dots together but so i think he's 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 uh, i think he's 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 out earned bob eidger in terms of yearly salary on a number of occasions this is a rich man he doesn't need money he's also he's, he's obviously motivated by uh, success by making money and by um beating his competition so i expect him in the next two to three years to start showing us what he's made of because he's not playing around and he just want this to be the one thing he was never a success at you know so i think yeah he'll, he'll have the business yeah i completely agree with both of you and um i also um you know find him to be ambitious and he wants he feels active and wants to do stuff you know and make stuff so I got that vibe from him talking and uh, it's funny that he mentioned um, Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman a couple of times and um, that's his priority I think with DC if uh, if he wants to, to do anything in that so yeah because cause, cause they're the they're the Gordon they're the Gordon Ramsay and the Bear Grylls of of media of movies and shows you know he, he, they're the they're the A-listers just like a Bear Grylls yeah. or a Gordon Ramsay would be for the story, I mean, that, you know, that thing that is stuff. obvious that's, and that's i don't know why it's just well i know why but it's just it's just weird that it just didn't happen but there's still hope um now more than ever i think um based on what's going on right now but that might change if you know toby still stays and um nothing changes in the exec team um so then again it, it's just the same thing then nothing he can do will you know change that but what what do you think is the primary reason that this merger happened in the first place? I think um, AT and T has been like very. They want to build their their network, like their five G network, and they have a lot of debt they want to build down. And I think that they were hoping that. Um, Warner Media would be a, you know, if you're looking at like Disney Plus and how much revenue they're bringing Disney, um, like hand over fist, um, after, you know, being fairly new, I think they were hoping to be able to find an easy way to kind of start building that down. And the just kind of hassle ended up being probably more than like the worth. You know, there's all sorts of infighting and behind the scenes politicking going on. And then you're managing a like, you know, I'm sure, or not sure. I, I know I used to work in wireless, and so I know that like that customer base is is pretty finicky already. Like if people don't have their internet connection or, or whatever, um, you know they're they they're gonna re react um, to uh, you know pricing and connection speeds and availability and all that. 
And so you add in like movie yeah. fans <laughs> to that and like movie customers and, uh, and, you know, Snyder Cut fans. I'm, I'm sure it's not like the, the majority, too. but I mean, you get people all of a sudden that are like way more. You add in this segment that's really vocal and opinionated and it's like, OK, we're already putting this this effort in and like the. um if you're going to be putting in that much money and, and effort and time into something, maybe something that's more in their, in their wheelhouse, it's, um, I don't know. It just, if they weren't going to commit to it for the long run, it doesn't seem like the type of thing that it makes sense for like a short term kind of cash injection. And it was easier. They had an op- opportunity to just get rid of it. And, and I think probably it was a relief to not have to worry about, you know, all that drama. Yeah. I think like, make no mistake about it. If this was a success, they wouldn't be selling. You know, they would they would be staying around for the for the, the big bucks. But they're maybe some people might be confused as well because they have seventy one percent of the shares. I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. And but they're not the sole owners. They just have the most shares. Is that would that be right? Yeah. Yeah. So how how does that so, you know the investors have seventy one percent share in uh, in the company and you know the rest of it Discovery owns, right? But um, the executive from Discovery, the CEO from Discovery, is going to run all of Warner Media now. So how is um, how is that going to affect the decision making? Who will have the most authority? They are, from what I understand, that it's forming a new company, and so it's not so much like that. Discovery is acquiring them so much as they are, you know, they're merging operations. However, you know, it sounds like you know, the discovery kind of model is probably going to be the the dominating force. Um, but there's a lot of complementary stuff going on. You know, Discovery is not making you know theatrical movies or, you know, TV shows in the same way that Warner Media is. And so there's going to be some duplication of roles that's going to need to go away. But also I think that it's complementary enough that hopefully the two organizations join together and really it's just going to be i think mostly applying the um sort of discovery ethos to um warner media projects as opposed to like outright consuming it but um also the thing that people need to keep in mind with these mergers is that whenever they get announced or whenever news of it happens the the first thing that everyone says is that oh nobody's losing their jobs and nothing's going to change and we still want to satisfy you know they they say they're going to fix whatever the obvious problems are but then claim you know, we're not going to be laying off people or whatever. And like the fact of the matter is yeah. people are going to lose their jobs. There is going to be duplication. And and they just always say that to, to smooth that over and kind of lessen, you know, kind of panic or concern over over massive change. And once the deal closes, then they're like, all right, we don't need this department. We don't need that department. These executives are gone. So I don't I wouldn't put too much stock into any sort of claims of what they are and aren't going to do. And I would look more at what has discovery done in the past that worked and just assume that they are going to assume that that's going to work going into the future, regardless of what they're saying their plans are. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think has lost going to change his methods. He's worked the past 15 years, you know, but will it work in a movie business? As, as, as Stephen was saying, like, w- wouldn't that actually carry over to movies? Because reality TV shows, keeping up the Kardashians is different from, you know, <laughs> what we're going to get on HBO max and, in theater so it'll be interesting to see how well it goes i for. think his approach would help him in streaming um and streaming movies and shows and all that um especially because there's hbo and their team is pretty good and they keep even now they keep making amazing content um the main issue would come to warner brothers movies and you know dc movies so that's my main concern i don't know how that will change um, especially with the Snyderverse and, you know, all that stuff. Will Walter Hamada still be there? <laughs> because he's the head of DC content, right? So he doesn't need to go. Uh, they can still keep him around. Um, the My main thing with uh, Kylar was that I didn't think that they would let him go, you know, because he was he was the head of it. He was basically the head of HBO Max and doing uh, overseeing that, right? And uh, so far, I think he was doing a pretty pretty good job. Maybe not the best, uh, and maybe not the best decisions were made, but he was still, you know, it, it was still the first first year. And um, again, he's not leaving now um, immediately, but still, uh, I didn't think they would let him go, and that was a surprise. 
So that means maybe there's more surprises like that in the future. Yeah, I, I think that that's probably, I mean, you look at, like I was saying, Kylar rubbed a lot of people in Hollywood the wrong way um, for a lot of reasons. And um, I think that um, that was especially true internally at, at Warner Media. He very much was saying, we're not going to do things the old way anymore. And people were losing their jobs and people were losing their power and weren't getting away with the kind of things they used to get away with under him. And it makes it really easy to make him the scapegoat then for whatever kind of issues you're facing. Um, I think that it should be notable that um, Toby Emmerich seems to be relatively close um, with uh, Zaslav. And um, I don't know if I don't know if it'd be fair to say that he like orchestrated the, the deal or floated or, or connected any dots to like to make it happen necessarily. But I do think it's it's a um, a significant thing to kind of note that they've got a like a long history together, and um, probably Zaslav is going to have more preference to you know giving an ear to that. But also, whenever there's a merger like this, no matter the success or failure of a CEO, they're almost always going to go simply for the ease of transition. You know, there's two CEOs. It's rare that one is going to want to then take a seat beneath the other one. They'd rather like go out on top throughout the merger, and it's it's a better chance to get a better package also for for the exit. So, I don't know. There's a bunch of different kind of angles there, and I'm sure that a lot of people are going to try to make Kylar the scapegoat if they haven't already. I think they did. Um, but the biggest thing with his exit is that that's just kind of the yeah. way it goes when there's a merger like that. Is Whoever is not going to be in charge doesn't tend to stick around. Yeah, he's kind of the one who came out when the announcement was made about the going to streaming those big movies like Matrix and Godzilla vs Kong. He was the one that was backing it up and saying like he was even saying it might even carry over to twenty twenty two. There's no uh, different yeah. um, answer on that. Like he was saying in interviews, so yeah, he definitely was like like Toby maybe behind the scenes maybe he would have been a big. Uh, pusher of that, but he didn't come out in interviews and say, you know, he, he didn't put himself at the front place of it, and uh, Killar did. So, yeah, we'll have to see. He probably, as Stephen said, rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, rubbed a lot of the big talent the wrong way. And when you, like, if you're going to have to choose between a, a list director, a list star, or an executive, the executive can be easily replaced. So, I think he kind of maybe effed himself over there, kind of in a way. But of course, Warner Brothers just going to throw him under the bus anyway. Because it wasn't going yeah, that. And what do you guys think about the uh, news that Toby? It was not news, but um, the rumor that Toby was being floated around to Netflix and looking for other jobs. Was that from Toby, or do you think that someone actually did that? I don't know where the the news itself came from. I do know what I heard about it um, after Grace Randolph started teasing it. Was that it was it was mostly like speculative. So like there was the fact that, um, that Emmerich had kind of been floated and there was a possibility. There was a question of like, what's going to happen at the end of his contract. But for the most part, the, the inspiration for the piece was his contract ends in 18 months and it's not a sure thing for him to stick around. And then the rest of it was speculative, but because he has become such a big name, like with people who care about the Snyder version, all that, once the news came out and the fact that Grace kind of primed and stirred the pot on on it being like, oh, is this the end of Toby Emmerich? Um, it turned it into this this really big thing. And really, I think it's more like, oh, that's interesting. He might be looking at other opportunities and his contract is up in 18 months. We'll see what happens. And it, it took a much more certain like he's on the way out um, tone after uh, after it dropped. Go on. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's hard it's hard to know like what why it was done. Just a way of showing how bad things is internally at Warner Brothers. If he was willing to jump ship to Netflix or something, or maybe it was to make uh, Killer look bad or, or something. I, I don't really know what the meaning behind what, what the meaning of it was. Like, was he trying to say that I'm getting out of here because like Killer doesn't know what he's doing? I don't know. It, it's hard to know. But like to think that if he goes, all the problems about the Snyder Cut. Metaverse will be solved. It's wishful thinking yeah. as well, you know. So it's like we just don't know. 
we just don't know. All these articles they're done because they're pop pieces for these guys who are suits, who know people uh, who write the articles and stuff like that. It was even a Man of Steel one come out today. It's kind of disregard that movie. You just don't know, really, and we won't know until we know. Yeah. You know that's the simple. That's the simple thing about it. We won't know until we know. I can't really add anything yeah. to that. I think that um, Toby. The problem with Toby is not just that Toby bad or something like that. It's just that he seems to have a direct opposition to Zach, and you know that's not good. That's not a good business um, thinking. You know that some other executives, whether they're doing good or bad, would make. Um, that's my concern with Toby being there still, um, and directly linked to the Snyderverse happening, because um, he seems to have a personal agenda against Zack. Um, he's not going like, "Oh, look, Z Zack Snyder's Justice League did so poorly, and hence we are not continuing with it." Right? Um, just like they did with BVS. So that would still be valid if if that happened today, and you know if they did it with Rotten Tomatoes. But both of that, both of them were successful, and you know um, Rotten Tomatoes were was good, and the streaming numbers were good. Whether you know it's as good as everyone's saying it is or not, it was still good, right? And um, he's still not saying anything. He hasn't called Zach. Kylar hasn't called Zach. Nobody has reached out to thank him if they are ending things with him. Nobody said that they they're ending things with him. Which of course, if there's a future, um, you know, if they want to keep things open for the future, if you know changes happen or anything. But still, um, they just the the very next day, Anne Sarnoff came out and with that article. I don't think that it was totally her opinion. I think that was Toby's doing again because <laughs> why would Anne Sarnoff have a, has have anything against Zach, right? She's new and she doesn't know all this. So, what do you think of all that? Um, I think it's hard because you can't say that like personal politics are entirely absent from these situations, but it's really easy for people, especially people that don't like run multi-billion-dollar companies to assume that it's all totally petty and personal, but there's kind of another level with the stuff like this of, um, these decisions are, are no longer like necessarily exclusively. Like I don't like Zach or, or I don't like Zach's fans so much as a, a referendum on like the decision-making that got them where they are. And so for someone like, like, for example, you look at Walter Hamada and he came in, to Warner Brothers or to DC Films in an era where the kind of modus operandi was um, let's move away from Zack Snyder and let's let's mark out a different path and be different. And so regardless, even if he thinks that Zack Snyder is like the greatest and wants to restore the Snyderverse, which he doesn't, but hypothetically, even if he did, the any decision to move in that direction invalidates the reason he got his job in the first place and the, in the people that hired him. Um, and then so you look at someone like Toby and it's his decision-making that ended up in a lot of, with a lot of these situations. And so there's, there's pride, but then there's also a, a desire to like, you know, does, do you really believe in your decision-making and someone like him, who's got a long history, you know, is more likely to say like, well, let's, it was the right decision-making. We just haven't had the time or haven't been allowed the circumstances to see it play out correctly. Um, and so they are going to kind of be dedicated to, to their way of thinking. And like I said, I'm sure that there's, you can't entirely rule out the pettiness, but it's not exclusively like I'm mad at Zach and I'm going to do this to yeah. stick it to him. It's that they, you know, they truly believe like, okay, maybe there is an opportunity with the Snyderverse, but it's a necessary, we have to nip this in the bud and move forward. Otherwise we're going to get caught up in the same cycle we've been in for the past decade. Um, which arguably the reason they're in that cycle is because they won't just commit to finishing it also. But um, while I don't agree with it, I can like see, I understand kind of where you, how you can get stuck in that kind of yeah. frame of reference. Um, and uh, that's, you know, an issue they need to overcome. Yeah. These are the executives. Like you have directors, you have actors who of course want money to the day as well, but they have that art artistic integrity about them. And you have executives, you have suits who want to make money, but also don't want to piss off their, their the hierarchy that's above them, their boss. Or like, if there's a certain political agenda within Warner Brothers that Zack Snyder 
bad, then you're not going to go against Toby Emmerich over it. You're not going to go against Anne Sarnoff over it or Walter Mata and say, hey, look, we should do this. Because at the end of the day, these people have jobs as well. And whether it's right or wrong, they have to protect their job. I'm sure it's good jobs, well-paid jobs. But they're not going to go piss off the boss. They're not going to go get fired over a director or a fan base because they think it's right necessarily. A lot of these executives go with the flow. They go with what the political agenda is. And look, we can see that maybe they could have had the Snyder Cut over by now and it could be finished and they could move on and they wouldn't have this cloud over them and stuff like this. But maybe a lot of it is ego as well. A lot of it is just, you know, they think they're on the right path and maybe they are. Maybe the next six DC films will be unbelievable and bring in those at box office and everyone will be rejoiced and the universe will feel like a universe. And I don't know. I don't know. But uh, I just think um, a lot of Snyder's dropping hints in every interview that they don't want them to answer enough interview stuff like that. I think it's, we know where everyone stands right now. Dak will come back if they want him to come back, but he probably will only come back if the conditions are right. He was being given the freedom to, to a degree, and but DC are also saying that we, we've moved on. You've got this now, we're, we're going ahead. I know that's probably not the popular opinion. The popular opinion for me to say would be Affleck is getting a, a movie or a series, or Jar- Jarlow Joker is getting a series and stuff, and I want those things too. I'm not making fun of anybody or anything like that, but that's the popular thing to say, but I can't I'm just going on what the facts are right now. Like Henry Cavill has signed up to do Highlander. He signed up to do talks and maybe even come back from Mission Impossible. I know he was killed off, but no one ever dies in these franchises. You know, he's got The Witcher. He's got uh, maybe talks of him being James Bond at some stage. Like he has a lot of projects on his plate. Ben Affleck is doing a lot more dramas now. I'm sure he'll definitely get back into acting or directing pretty soon as well. You know, you got all these high profile gagadots pregnant right now. Like, you know, like who's to say, like, she might have another child after that as well and stuff like that. You just don't know what's going to happen with these people and where they actually stand. So for us to say the Snyderverse is definitely happening or being restored, I think there's a possibility of Joe Manganiello maybe getting a miniseries. That's how, that's that's restored in my eyes. If if Joe, if Joe yes. Manganiello was able to get a, a miniseries or if if, if it, some other side character, like a, a, a Ryan Choi was able to get a, a more of a, a, like a, a bigger role or a series or something like that. For me, I'd be happy with that for the Snyderverse to be restored to that degree because any movie that is in Zack Snyder's world after Zack Snyder's just the whether Zack's involved or not is a win for me personally. I think it's it's uh, it would be cool to see. We'll just have to wait and see and uh, get, keep your uh, your campaigns going and stuff like that. But right now to see the universe that's building with Army of the Dead and the discussion that's just being built around Army of the Dead, these theories which we'll get to and stuff, and just just the characters, the world. It's very exciting, and for me as a zombie fan, I want to see that right now more than I kind of want to see a Justice League <laughs> uh, continuation. For one reason, because Zack Snyder looks a lot yes. more happier. He's getting the freedom. <laughs> Seems to be a hit. Henry Cavill's off doing his thing. Jared Leto is crazy. He'll do whatever to come up. Anyway, uh, I just, I just want to see my favorite director make great movies without any shit. So. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And uh, it's also funny.